Welcome, thanks all for hitting on the playlist. Um, in this playlist, guys, we're going to be taking you through everything you need to know to get yourself started on Soul Rare so you can actually start acquiring cards, being competitive in tournaments, doing trades, making profit, uh, trading Ethereum. All We're going to be covering all of that stuff, okay? If at any point you do enjoy the content, I would appreciate you smashing that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then by all means, please do. It means a lot to me. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, thoughts, or anything, just drop them in the comment section. I get back to it every Everyone who comments on the videos as best I possibly can anyway, it's very rare I've never got back to a comment. In the description of each video you'll have the links so you can get all the free stuff that you you can get your hands on to actually get started with so rare, whether it be your Coinbase account to get yourself, get yourself some free coin or whether it be the account itself to get your free start or 10 commons and your bonus rare when you join. If you have any, as I say, any comments, questions, thoughts, anything at all guys, just drop them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoy the content, it is for you and um, let's get stuck into it. Now, there's going to be a lot of, the longer you're on this, pretty much every Sunday, so Rare will do what they call a power hour, and they'll have a little theme, maybe under 23s, maybe new issues of cards, maybe the last issue of last season's cards, and they put everything out to a frenzy. On top of that, we've got constant IPOs on the auctions tab here, and uh, like I've mentioned in other videos, you've got the manager sales tab. Now, when I was getting started, what I would do is I'd start to hunt down some auctions I'd be interested in. And I'll try and find something, as I said, I've said in other videos, what's on the go while I'm recording is just all J-League stuff, which I don't have an amazing depth of knowledge on. Um, to try and pull a decent example, but let's say this guy looks bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Right, so, Kayoro Matoma. Okay, now, his scores are actually decent. I mean, I actually have a bit of a look at this guy. So, at the moment, he's no one's got a bid on him. He's got three hours to go. We'll keep an eye, you know, we'll keep an eye on it. If this is you... What I then also do is I'm going to have a look at, so you just click on them again, you can see all the cards in circulation, okay? Now, Japanese League hasn't been out for too long, so there won't be much. He has a super rare on the market for 0.12, and there's no other rares available, and then when you look at the price that the rares have went for, talk about a lucky click for an example for a video, eh? Uh, 0.2s, 0.2s, 0.2s. Now, if there's none other on the market, it doesn't really serve me for the purpose of example that I'm after, but when I was new, what I'd be doing is I'd be focused on this guy, and I'm like, right, I'm buying... Kyoro Matoma, okay? And then if I missed out on the auction or when the auction was ticking along, I'd also be checking the secondary market and making sure that I don't go over the price that I could pay for another one that's already out there because you can get sucked into auction mode, eBay mode very easily and you get carried away with things. Now, as much as I'm telling you that's what I do, in a power hour that I just told you about, I actually got well carried away and I paid, um, I could have paid like 0.44 for an Albin Lafon and ended up paying playing paying 0.515 or something like that not much in the grand scheme of things and whatever but it's so it's important that you're you're checking the secondary market as well as the, the ipos on top of that like i've mentioned in one of the previous videos a lot of trading and a lot of um you know transactions are done privately manager to manager peer to peer via the discord channel so again when you're getting on this it's very important that you're on there because you might have somebody that's itching to buy something that you're itching to sell and you don't have access to them because you're not in that Discord channel, you know. But I, I check the Discord pretty much daily. And I check for sale, want to buy, want to trade, and in general chat. And if there's announcements that come up, I'll always check them as well. There's much more in it than that. But it's just with all the apps I'm trying to get around anyway. Like Twitter and YouTube and you know everything else. I, I need to try and make sure I'm being productive and I'm dicing about these things, you know. So in terms of when you're getting started and you're buying from the gallery, uh, pardon me, for your gallery from the IPO, the auction market, you want to make sure you're paying as little as possible. Again, like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, acquiring coin cheap is very powerful because me stepping into the market today, let's say I've picked up my coin at 265 like it's trading at the time of recording. And then by the time the auction for this super rare Caro Matoma wants to go off, it's a live auction, it's an IPO, it's not this market sale, just for the example. Everyone else, if they're doing card transactions, they're paying £300 a coin because that's the way the, the prices went. Whereas I've had my coin sitting there chilling out at a nice easy price. So that gives you a bit of an edge right away. Now, in terms of doing trades and different things, right, I've only did two trades, right, since I've been on this. I've sold one to market, which was earlier today, and I did a private trade between... Um, bits and pieces so what you can do is you can do direct offers on cards as well so I can just grab one of these guys and I can just do oh, I always get that wrong let me press the down key I can just click on uh, make an offer 
and that offer will get sent straight to my man here at Outcome. Or I can DM him and say, what do you want for this thing? Or, you know, and you can do that kind of thing as well. So when you're kind of scouting players, if you see somebody like, oh, do you know what? That guy's, that guy's had that card, that Albi Anagetti, for six months and he's still on level zero. The gang obviously doesn't really need him or use him. Can I give him some coin? Can I trade him a card that I have that he wants? And you can do all that through... Uh, direct offers so when you do make an offer like that it's fairly rudimental pretty straightforward but what I can also do is hit the direct offers thing here and then you might even be able to see the offer that I did yeah, so my Latif Blessing I got a tier 2 super rare I think he is uh, I managed to get 0.33 of a coin a Carlos Vela and a super rare Medina for him so for me that was a very very good trade and I was very happy with that um, but like you can see I've had a lot of other offers that I've sent out rejected and I've had a lot of other offers come in that I reject as well but when you're doing this like you can see with the successful trade I've had here you can you can do anything you want you could give somebody 10 cards and a coin for somebody it's not restricted on one for one or coin versus card or you can really dress it up any way you negotiate which is what me and Cert were doing on this day whenever that happened it's not got a date on this but it was like a week ago or two weeks ago you can um you can negotiate wherever you see fit and the reason i've been able to get a trade like this and he's happy with the trade i'm happy with the trade i'm very happy with the trade um is because there's only like seven of them in circulation there's only going to be 10 he's very powerful in the matrix he's a bit of a cheat code he's one of these guys he's a forward but he plays right back he plays center mid anyway i'm telling you too much about blessing that i don't need to tell you but point being i set the price you know so um i I only sell for what I'm comfortable with. There's not a market rate. There's not like, oh, well, that's the price to now. That's what I've got to sell for if I want out of something. I set the offer. The other trade that I've done is I actually managed to do quite a quick flip on an Alex Tellez. Now, Alex Tellez is OP on um, on so rare. Being a portal player, the sort of player he is, the points scoring, the goals and assists that he bags, he's always been quite powerful. So when the news broke that it was looking like, man, you were throwing their hat in the ring, I picked him up for a level 90 as well, which makes him extra extra valuable because it once you get past level five it takes a long time to rank the cards up you need much more it takes up much more xp so it's like any computer game you've ever played you know um and then i managed to sell them four days later for more than double the coin um so i'm pressing up now it's not there we go um so yeah so i've only that that's the only two experiences i've had in terms of trading out or selling or whatever but the main thing to remember with both of that is you set the price you know whatever you want to pay for something if you're buying from someone and equally when you're selling it's all entirely down to you you can do it straight negotiating with another player person or you can just go on the market and just see what's available what's out there let's even just go back and look at tellers again just because he's an easy enough example we'll just hit cards and then we can see everyone who's on the market the now and then while you're looking at way up so we've got somebody We've got a level 4 at 0.55 from Footy Phil, and then Willie 84 has a 0.5 level 2. So they're both much of a muchness. You might pay the extra little bit of coin, what's that, $17, which is probably like a tenner, to get those extra two, you know, to get those extra points for the tournament, just to try and win something a bit quicker. There's a level 3 for 0.5, and that's as high as it goes really at the moment, you know. Um, so when you're when you are comparing prices, do bear in mind the the level of the card as well. So if you've got something like a level nine Alex Tellez, that is much more valuable, much more valuable than a level four or a level two because getting from I've got a lot of cards now that are level five, so I know this now. But once you get to level five, it does slow down in terms of how quickly you can rank up because the the bar you need to fill to rank up is much bigger. It takes much more XP to get into it. Um, so yeah. And you know, some of the best buys that I've done on this, you know, and it's hard to say, like, I'd love to in this video to tell you, right, this is a guy you should buy first, buy him second, buy him third, but you're really at the mercy of who's willing to sell, what prices are available, what coin is on go, who's injured at point of recording, you know, who's in the team, who's out of favour, all that kind of thing. But a lot of the players that I've picked up, like Ruffier, I, I didn't really want him, but when I seen that super rare the price he was going for, I was like, well, I'll buy him. Same with the Weston McKinney, you know, and there's a few others that I'm sure we'll see, Kosaitani, you know so you'll know a good price when you see it and when you know a good price when you see that and you think oh, fuck, he's only 0 0.132 for that thomas lamar if you find that appealing then uh, definitely jump on it and make sure you're, you're capturing it but like, again i said in the last video my first bunch of trades weren't what i'd call tournament cards they were definitely more asset acquisition for me guamares gabriel magales um zeno van houston you know a, a bunch of these guys i just wanted them because i believe they'll have bigger careers and 
the current club that they're at. So you need to make that decision yourself, you know, Ferran Torres. Is that, you know, what path am I going down? Am I going down the path of I want to acquire assets? And if I win tournaments or something, then it's a wee silver line and a little bonus. I want to do trades, buy low, sell high. Or are you looking to acquire cards cheap? rank them up, win some more free cards, do some trading and really build, 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 build with activity. That's what you really need to decide. If you're going to be the latter, then you need to make sure that your purchases are on point. You're not paying over the odds. You're paying something you're comfortable with and the things that you're buying will be active and you'll be able to utilise. Equally, if you're on the flip side to that, you have to be prepared for holding it, you know, because when I look at, at my guys now, so uh, where is he? So Ferran Torres, if he didn't transfer to Man City, I had a feeling he'd probably leave in the summer. I didn't think it'd be Man. Oh, I didn't know it'd be Man City. But I had a feeling Valencia had a bit of a fire sale. But if I was stuck with him and he stayed at Valencia, I have to. I have to prepare myself for that eventuality. It's something I've got from Football Index and Footstock, you know. So I'm not going to buy something as a potential asset and then be raging that I've got it or how much I paid for it. I need to be. I need to be happy with the money I'm putting out against it. Um, and Ferran Torres, you know, is under 21, under 23 even for this purpose. Young, exciting guy, blah, blah, blah. It's not too much of a risk. But again, like I said in one of the other videos, what you'll realise over time is rares are not quite as strong an asset as a super rare or a unique. And that sounds very obvious, right? But when I was buying Torres, Guamares, Gabriel Magalhães, Lee Kang in, anyone else, Depay, I'm thinking all oh, these guys are going to rock it in price when this happens and he transfers to Barca and he does this and he does that and you know it's with the super rares definitely with the rares not as much but equally on the flip side to that the rares have got much more liquid in them because they're overall much more affordable you know so buying a tele is at 0.429 when some sort of news breaks to then flip them and sell them quite quickly is achievable if it was an SR you then talk about picking them up at let's say point. 1.5 coins and if you want to double your bubble someday pay a thousand pound for a card you know there's got to be a lot of them there's got to be a lot of interest in there and there's got to be a lot behind that so the rares you do find a lot more liquidity in in that respect whereas i say the uniques don't get me wrong from what i can see the uniques definitely have a lively market but it's a much bigger price banding than i operate in so I don't have much experience in that, so I'm sorry. Um, and the super rares are that kind of halfway house where on some football index, like if you had a, a 10k portfolio, whoever you'd be putting 2k into, you'd probably be able to get that. You know, that's probably like your equivalent of like a super rare or a unique in that respect in terms of how valuable they are to you, how many, how much tournaments you can deploy them in, how much they can actually utilize for you. So, um, so yeah. So please be mindful of all these things. I can't say it enough. So rare data and Discord are must must haves for this kind of thing, guys. Um, like, subscribe, share, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble, and I will catch you on the next one. <laughs> I keep getting it wrong. Take care. Bye bye.